a very playful dude. Mm hmm. Yep. Aloha, and welcome to Wisdom Dialogues with Hope Johnson. Hooray. <laughs> Today, my panelists are Lori Tibitot and Bob Shine. Yay. Albert they're my usual, they're my usual panelists, but they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, oh, aloha, Josh. Yay. Thank you for joining. So I have a super fun question that has already been presented to me. It's really awesome. Aloha. Aw. I have your blend. Yay, Josh. I made you a blend. It's delicious. Pretty soon I'm going to get a label for it and put a label on it. Right now it's like, I'll show you in a little bit. Look at that. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I have one super fun question already. Let's see what it is. Didn't I have it up already? Let's see. Oh, here it is. Okay. First of all, I'd like to stop, start out by saying this was what occurred to me yesterday, and it was so funny. It, it occurred to me. I, it was just so funny. I just bust out laughing. Like, it's just so easy, you guys. It's so simple. It's like, it's all one thing, and it's all for one thing. That's it. There's nothing else. There's nothing going on. These fluctuations that we perceive, they're nothing. They're just for entertainment. All, all of the world that's perceived, it's just one thing and it's for one thing it's like really simple it comes down to that it's laughable how simple it is yeah. just this idea of getting caught up with different stories and stuff it's really funny it then we were all struggling to try to understand i've been talking with you for how many years now every tuesday and i well, one of, one of these times you'll just stop struggling, won't you? That's it. <laughs> I just need to surrender. You stop struggling about it, and then there won't be any struggle. <laughs> so who's struggling? It's just a choice that's being made. It's just a choice in identity, you know? And it's, and it's so from moment to, more, to moment, and that's why, you know, it's like the healing is just in an instant. Is like as soon as you're ready to acknowledge, and one of someone put it some way, I forgot the name of the dude, but someone posted it to my wall. The way he put it is like, just remember your majesty. Like that's who you are. All these things seem to be occurring to you, but there's nothing changing about you. Like all these things that you perceive in the world, they're all to like stir up some doubt in you about who you are. You just don't. You just don't doubt it. It's easy. The whole purpose of all those things cropping up, whatever it happens to be, whatever it seems to be, the whole purpose of all those things cropping up is to, is to make you self-doubt. It's like a hook. That's why at any moment, you just recognize who you are. You make a choice. You make a choice to recognize who you are, and everything is nothing. It's all one thing. See, the, see when, you get, when you get that it's all one thing, and it's for one thing, then nothing's a problem. Nothing, there, things that appear to be a problem, you know, like I'll be having a conversation with someone with, about something, and, you know, the perception, I could see the way they're taking it is that it's a problem. And it's like, well, you know, the thing is, it's not really a problem, too. 
you know, like nothing's going on. You know, like for instance, you're, you're, you know, just, just for instance, your home's getting run over by lava, right? Uh, that's not a problem. That is like a fact of the matter. Does not, then facts aren't really happening. It's a fact of the matter. And it might be taken like, it usually, usually is taken like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. What a problem. Right. But when you see that everything's one thing and it's all for that one thing, it's actually for lifting the veil. That's the whole purpose of everything. Then whatever happens is cool. Whatever happens is appropriate. It's fine. It's just occurring it's, anyways. <laughs> it's lifting the veil for you to see what's real. Yeah, because when you see what's real, you're going to forget about all that bullshit. And what are we going to see that's real? Well, it's not it's not the same as looking through your through the eyes that you're that you have on your body, let's say. <laughs> like body eyes. It's not the same as looking like that, because that's looking in separation. Right. You know. Um when you see what's real, it's like a it's like an inner eye kind of perceiving and it's a true perception. And it's like whatever is coming to you is for seeing through a guilty self-conscious. There's a self-concept. There's no reality to it whatsoever. That's what's all an energetic us. play. That's what? what's in front of us. Yeah. And your and even your physical body and everything, it's all just an energetic play. It's a projection of how you wish to see yourself in your mind first. It's just an energy play. That energy play is what makes the body seem real. Yes. And and that's what and, and then buying into that makes you feel stress. Buying into that the body's real, then, that's, then you feel stress about it. Right. And all of that is happening in front. Yeah, like a screen, like on a screen, though. I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's all just, it's all just playing in your mind. And, you know, it's projected to, it's kind of like it's projected to outside of your mind so that you can perceive it. But in the perceiving, the way it's perceived is you're getting a body sense. So it appears as if you're in a body and you're responsible for your body and things that happen in the world. Right. But nothing's happening. It's just an, a play of energies. It have, it's, it's occurring to you. It's a, it, that's why it's, it's more, um, it, it's more, what's the word? Truthful, I guess, to say that it's occurring to you, then it's happening. Hey, Dylan, would you mind taking another space, please? Yeah, go to somewhere else, like in up to your room or in another room. You can even go in my room if you like right now. Thank you, buddy. So it's just, it, it's just occurring. It's like a, it's like occurring like currents, like thought currents. See, nothing's really going on. Thank you. I love you. Appreciate you. Nothing's really going on. It's just this thought of separation extrapolating and all these things cropping up like they're hooks. And the hooks are awesome. That's the thing. The, the, the hooks are also so awesome because with the hooks, you can, get, you, can, you can expand joy even more. With the hooks, you can expand more e joy even more and even be an example of that, you know. It's like, it's like all, all the time people are getting upset about things and, you know, and, and when you're not getting upset about things, it just calms everything down. You know, you're, it's, just, it's like an, a way to, for expanding more joy. It's like you, it's, it's like everyone, everyone has within them a spark of the divine, let's say. So there's a, like a, it's like, there's a, a, a tiny light inside, you know, when I was a kid, it would be like, it would be like, um, there'd be this song and it would be like, here's my light. And it's like this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. He knows it. <laughs> 
You guys probably know it. And then there's a part that goes, hide it under a bushel. Oh no, I'm gonna let it shine. So like the hiding it under the bushel is like the taking on judgment so that your light, it's like your light gets covered up. It's never gone or anything, but it gets covered almost like shrouded, you know, almost like shrouded with it. It's basically, it, it's basically um, like holding on to a judgment. This shouldn't be happening. What if this happens to me? They shouldn't be doing that, that kind of anything like that. It's holding on to a judgment, then it dims your light, so to speak. Something and, bad's going to happen in the future. Yes, and, and, it's, and it's kind of setting, setting forth your future. It's almost like it's laying out your future because the way you feel like, that, like right now when, when you're agreeing with judgment, making judgment real, is you're setting out circumstances that are, that are made to bring up the same kind of feeling. Because it's a feeling that it, that's going forward. It's the feeling that's going forward, you know, like, like Abraham Hicks would say, it's a, it's an emotional journey. So it's the feeling that keeps on going forward. So you can say that the feeling is kind of like writing your future script for you right now. See? Yay. Urba and Christine. Yay. I knew you would find it. Thank you so much for joining. Yay. Yeah. So since it's an emotional, it's an emotional thing. It's such an emotional thing. I love you. It's, it's like, it's like you, you get this, you get this hook right away. Like the first reaction is some kind of hook. The first reaction is when, when there's a thought, right? It's some kind of hook. It's like a lot of the times. And so when there, when that reaction, that hook reaction is, you know, that's actually an opportunity to expand that much more joy, let's say. And so extend and expand in that much more joy because that's who you are. You know, you're, you could say you're made for expanding joy. People, I've heard people say before, God made us for his pleasure. And it used to go, Ooh, how sick. That's disgusting. I don't want anything to do with that. And, <laughs> but then, but then after a while I realized what it's, what it means, you know, it's, it's more, it's more symbolic. It's kind of like, and you know, think of it symbolically when I say this, it's kind of like God created us to experience joy through us. Yeah. Okay. Through our expanding joy. It's like ever expanding. It gets, it gets more and more joyful and we, and we make ourselves joyful through creating, but we don't create, we don't create like that here. Like as, as far as like creating, like people would think, but our creative power here is in making a choice for reality. That's our creative power. And that's what brings us more and more joy. So it, when you get that, all of it is for one thing and all of it, all of it is one thing and all of it's for one thing is for one purpose. And that's expanding our joy. It's like, how are you going to care what, what happens? How are you going to mind what happens in it when you know what it's all for? Because there's nothing going to stop you from, being on purpose, if that's your choice. Yeah, Osho uh, talks about how you don't have to succeed anything in life. All you need is joy and bliss. If you've yeah. experienced that, you fulfilled the ultimate purpose of life. I that's am super stoked. That, that's what makes me so stoked about having a place run over my lava, by lava, beautiful place run over by lava. Um, and you know, in the recent, recent week having it occur to me and then through a lot of my friends reflections too, this money thing, like there's not enough money. And I'm just like super stoked that that's occurring to me because as it occurs to me, that's how that gets healed. So I'm super stoked that it's occurring to me. And you know, of course, I get the reflections from all these different friends about having money troubles and stuff like that. And I was like, and, and I'm just like, so, so overjoyed that I could have that same kind of, uh, kind of image occurring to me because I know I can take care of it. It's awesome. I'm happy that I'm happy for whatever it is that arises for me. The ultimate goal here is to lift the veil. 
And as the veil is lifting, you're elevating in joy. It does not matter what the circumstances are. Because that's what the wealth is, the joy and the bliss, not money, not any material yes. possession. That's, that's poverty. The more external things you need, the more inwardly impoverished you are. If you're yes. inwardly rich with joy and love and light and relaxation, then that's the wealth. There is no yes. other wealth than that. And here's the thing, you could have all the stuff or not, you're always the same. Well, it's not like, it's not like yeah. you need to have a little bit so you can prove something. Yeah, you, know, you know, it doesn't, it, and, it, and it's not like it's, it's not like it's negative to have a lot. It's not negative to have a little either because no one really has anything on the surface. That's all for play, it's for creative play. All you have is your spirit and that little tiny light, a little tiny light that I was talking about, when you let it out, it actually gets fed and then your light becomes brighter and brighter. And you can feed everyone around you, like spiritually feed everyone around you with it. See? Because that's the source of life, not money, not externals. The inner light is yes, your that's source. Right. That's right. That's all it is. So Ooh. then you don't have to be, um, you know, be careful, for instance, about anything. You know, it's funny. It always felt weird to me, too. And someone would tell me, oh, Hope, you got to be careful with that. That could be this. And, and it's like, oh, that just feels so weird that I would have to be careful about something. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> well, as the well, stuff... God is... Oops. Go ahead. As the stuff has been going here. Yeah. You know, I mean, because we can't take it with us. Yeah. I mean, literally just about everything. I don't know if you can hear the echo in this house. Nope, I can't hear the echo. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can hear it when I'm on the phone. They're like, wow. Oh. It's, so as it's been going, there's been so much fear. I, I guess the attached... I did not realize how attached I was to this stuff. Did not realize it. And as it's going, it's like, I, I mean, the dump today just got rid of so much more. I can't believe this stuff. It's bare minimal now. And it's really scary. I'm supposed to be saying hooray for the fear. Mm. <laughs> uh. Well, it's not like you're supposed to be saying anything, you know, you're supposed to be just how you are expressing. It's just that behind that, you know, you do have an inner smile about it. I do have an inner smile. Yeah. About not being attached to the stuff. About whatever it seems to be that it's occurring to you. That's the light. Because it's a, yeah, because it's that there is, there is a little, you know, it's like, it, it's like a little tiny bit of light because it's like shrouded so much with all this fear and longing and missing and all this stuff, but there's a little tiny bit of light and, you know, it's like that could be expanded, expanded. You could say that it, that light is smiling about this because it, because of what it's for and because of who you are. And you can and and you can accept that at any time. It's just that you're more in acceptance of the thoughts that are occurring to you about your life right now. Yeah. Because you think your life is really real. And so that's what makes it such a blessing because it's coming up to show you, okay, this is what it feels like when you think your life is real. Yeah, and it does not feel very good. I know. <laughs> it's terrible. Is it? Yeah, it feels terrible, but but really, you know, there's nothing there's nothing happening. It's a it's your it's occurring to you because you're making it occur to you. You're making it up. That's the thing. We make it all up. We're like doing some kind of drama show. It's so trippy. It's it's ugh. I've been, playing, I, I've been playing with that lately because since a couple of days we don't have any hot water in our house because the um, one water heater in this big ass house went out <laughs> and so there's been no hot water and I'm like playing with it lately because 
It's like, I go into a drama show when I have to get in the cold shower. <laughs> but, but it's funny because I'm laughing right behind the drama show. You know? It's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's like, oh. <laughs> like something's happening. It's funny because I'm in Hawaii and it's kind of warm out and the water's not even that cold. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the same drama show. Yeah, it's the same thing. I yeah. don't like this. I don't like it. It's making a show. It's funny. Yeah. So it's, is it really as simple as being afraid to surrender to the natural flow of life? Yeah. That's, yeah. I got that from your website. I just got that from the money thing you wrote. Yeah, there's just nothing, um, there, there's, there's just nothing that can hurt you. So it's like, um, it's like once you decide that you're separate, then things can hurt you according to you, according to you things can hurt you, but they can't really hurt you. But since according to you, they can hurt you, they can, then you can imagine that things can hurt you and you can be totally convinced of that. Completely. Hook, line, and thinker. <laughs> I mean, there's visions of being in the hospital. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's so ridiculous. That's what I need to do is laugh. I, it just came to me. You said to me, I just need to laugh whenever that hospital thing, and it, when it goes down into the, I'm in the psych ward because I've lost my mind. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and the trippy thing, the, the trippy thing is the only insane thing going on is believing in thoughts that this world is real. It's like believing in worldly thoughts is believing in judgment. And that's what makes you feel insane because it's insane. It's insane. You won't, you won't feel insane when you know what's true. It's, you know, it's like all this insanity can go on in front of you, but you're just totally in contentment. Mm. And even the thought of, oh, well, what if they lock you up and put, put you in a mental institution? It's like, so what? <laughs> It's the same. <laughs> I don't have to worry about money to be taking care of me. <laughs> well, and see, and, and then, so see, that thought right there is just another ego thought. Yes, I see yeah. that. Because it's as if you do have to worry about money. It's as if, you know, it's silly. It's really silly. It looks like, because what we perceive, it looks like whenever you're getting anything, usually whenever you're getting anything, you're paying for it with money. Either you have cash or you're using some kind of debit card or something like that. But I'm telling you, all the money is just part of a flow. It looks like you might work for it. You might, it looks like you might have a source of your money. It looks like it might come from a certain place. But it's just all part of a flow. You know, you're, going, you're getting whatever it is that you need anyways. The money is just a part of it. It's, a, it's in the picture. It's in the picture. It's not something that you need to make the picture go. All you need to make your picture, the, the picture go, all you need to make it the picture keep going is mind because it's all mind making the picture your mind supports the money like that <laughs> and everything else that it seems to buy that's what you wrote in that in that thing about a little when you give the kid the five dollars when they don't know what that means it doesn't it's nothing it's nothing yeah it's my, son Bron, my, my son's Bron, my son bronze 11 and he's still like that. He got, he got like 60 bucks for his birthday. And then someone told him, oh, you, you know, you should take it over into the farmer's market and, and spend it. So then he gets the idea, oh yeah, mom, I want to go to the farmer's market and spend my money. I'm like, oh, cool. So he buys one thing and he hands a 20 spot and then they give him the change back, right? He got five bucks, give him the change back. And then the next thing you know, the next thing you know, where's the rest of the money? in the back seat of the car just like hanging out back there it's like <laughs> and then when we get older we start putting meaning to it yeah and parents will tell their kids parent parents will teach their kids to put meaning to it when it doesn't mean anything see you got to save it yeah don't waste it or do you know how much money I spent on that? And look how you're treating it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy. 
There's Blaze, or there's Braun now. Hey, Braun. <laughs> hey, Braun. <laughs> got some wisdom dialogue going. No. You might notice Braun got a little bit of a buzz going on in space. He got a haircut since the last time I saw him. Oh, yeah? You haven't seen him in a while then. It's been a I while. He's been, been growing out. He gets it buzzed right off. Right. It's growing back. This is the guy right here who went to the farmer's market, bought his own, what was it? Bacon, bacon bomb? Bombs. Bacon bombs. The little wieners wrapped in bacon. <laughs> <laughs> little bacon bombs. <laughs> bacon bomb. Five mm. bucks worth. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Are they good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> he gives it a thumbs up. <laughs> nice. Happy birthday. Late. Oh, that was for March. Oh. That's what I mean. It's just like coming around. <laughs> that money, he had it all the way from March. Yeah, until this weekend. <laughs> well, he spent, he spent five of it. Do you know what happened to the other 55 bucks? <laughs> that was That was Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it found well, its way into my wallet. No. Yeah. No, <laughs> I decided to just pick it up since it was there. <laughs> I'll give it back to you whenever you want it. He saw me say happy birthday. He's like, what? I figured he's best friend's birthday. <laughs> I was telling the story about your birthday money and and, it and from he, March. He was just hanging out in his room, like just sitting there on his shelf. I'm like, what do I do with this? <laughs> it's just like you know it, it's we made it you can say we made it into something yeah we made, we made money into something and here's the thing if you weren't think of it, of it thinking of it from a money perspective i bet you that this adventure you're you're on right now with moving into a motorhome or a travel trailer whatever you're doing would be more, much more of an adventure and less of a stressful thing. It'd be way more playful. So you bring the money thing into it, it becomes a thing. And you have no idea what's going to occur because it's all playing out. And it's all playing out for one purpose. So it's playing out divinely. I have no idea. But there's also fear that it's going to unfold exactly the way the fear the lack is projecting it. Yeah, that's right now. That's right in the moment. That's the ego's mm -hmm. game. Like your perception is going to come true. <laughs> and, and you know, you get yourself believing it so hard. You get yourself believing it so hard that the story gets written according to that feeling. Oh, no. Oh, it's okay. You can escape it in an instant. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to hold it any longer than you want that above liber liberation. You basically, you can acknowledge that you're making a choice for this particular judgmental thought over liberation right now. It's only right now. You just like fall right into the sea of bliss right now. It's always there for you. I thought you're rich. You sold your house. You've got all tons of money. See, that's the thing. It's ira It's not even rational. Mm. Because it's throwing it into the future. Mm. Uh, it's, I'm telling you. The ego makes perceptions as if they're solid, as if they're totally in place. Right. Not. This is this is totally movable, changeable, and it's unfolding in, according to feeling. According to feeling. Yeah, it's all your own feeling coming. It's all your own feeling arising, arising, arising all the time. No matter what you see, see the things you start to see stop to trip, stop, stop, stop triggering a negative emotion in you because you're used to, you know, eventually you get used to just knowing who you are. That just becomes, a, that's how, how you relate with the world. You just know who you are. Mm. Yeah, because who you are is infinite. You you have no lack. It's just the petty little ego that's that's 
happy and even think about anything like lack you know even even with you you've got all the money and yet uh you know i it's like i go into these uh periods where i just see how stupid how petty how selfish yeah. how self-important i am you know to think of you know i've got all these problems and issues and it's just all self-generated and it's so stupid it's just worthless yeah. you know and that's just the separate selfhood apart from god you know <clears throat> and it's not even real no it's not it's not real it's all meaningless because it's coming from an unreal meaningless uh ego that's that's just uh, it's ego just like a parasite uh-huh yeah right make believe made out of the thought of separation just to get you to hook on hook in Nothing is happening. That's why, that's why, you know, I like to make the, dis distinct, the distinction that it's occurring to you. Whatever you have a perception of, it's occurring to you and it's very playful. So you could have the perception of, ev of anything, any kind of perception, and still be at peace within. Mm. I can feel that on some level. Yeah. Even as you get jarred, there's a, there's a big hooray. You get a jar, like, a, like, like say, uh, you could just get this big fear feeling. You know, that's what it is. It's like this big fear feeling. And it seems like it's from something that you perceived in the world, but it's not. It's not. It's the opposite way around. But you get this big fear feeling and you could be like, hooray, because that's like what is allowing the, so much more peace and joy to come through you to kind of like um, ignite that fire within you and burn so brightly and reveal to your own mind that nothing can harm you. Nothing can cause, cause harm. You only made that up. Christine says, what about restlessness? It's the same. That's what I mean. It's all one thing. It's all one thing. And, you know, it's like, okay, what is the restlessness for? When you recognize what the restlessness is for, the restlessness doesn't need to go away. It's fine. Like, oh, there's restlessness. Oh, there's mania, for instance. It's allowed. It's already. It's. It doesn't matter. Yeah, because it's playing on the surface. Even play. Even as it's playing through your own, you can laugh about everything. So when you say it's all one thing, can you say a little more? Yeah, nothing separate is happening. Oh. Nothing separate is happening. So like you say, you have the perception of you and your house, for instance, it's like all just, it's all just one thing. And it's all, it's all just a, it's all just a, like a hologram occurring to you, occurring to you out of your own, out of your own projection for you to perceive. It's like it witnesses back what you believe it witnesses to you, <laughs> witnesses back to you, what you believe, you know? And it's like, a, it's like the manifestation of beliefs. And it's like, oh, good. Thank you. Because the beliefs are hidden. That's how they're revealed. So that's why when you get the charge or something, that's where the belief gets revealed. And that's where it just gets undone. And so your life becomes an undoing of that guilty self-belief in all the different ways it's popping up. And in that, you're being uplifted and you're being given more joy because more light is coming through you. So you're just being given more joy. Is it in, because that's who you are. You're expanding joy. And then eventually you'll see the veils just get lifted and you can't have the perception of someone doing anything to you. Even when it occurs to you that someone's doing something, you cannot have the perception. Look at the little variation here, this little difference that I'm showing. Even as it occurs to you, that someone's doing something to you, like say someone comes up and bitch slaps you, for instance, even though that's occurring to you, you cannot have the perception that someone's doing something to you because you cannot see that someone in, in this 
in this illusion is actually separate, a separate part of it, and you're a separate part of it, and they're separately coming up to you and slapping you. It's all your own mind projecting it. So everything's like, thank you. And that's why Jesus would say, turn the other cheek. Because nothing, there's nothing happening. There's nothing happening. So it's like, and you know, and, and I've given a lot of pointers, like, how do you get to that? How do you get to that? Okay, how do I get to there from here? Get the feeling. Get that feeling. That has been my practice the whole time, is just to get the feeling. Let it be the feeling that it is. Be in, you know, in the mental component. We talked about this maybe a week or two ago. Mental component is that of that is I'm making this up. Don't let go of that. I'm making this up until you see. You know, it's like there's been many occasions where, you know, I've felt like really hooked. And then, and then it just keeps on, I, you know, I, I, I've just held on to I'm making this up. Even though it gets really hard because it seems like someone's doing something to me. I'm making this up and the ego automatically wants to come in and judge me for having made it up. And it's like, no, that's not the game either. It's I'm making this up, but it's like, yay that I'm making this up because I'm making up so that I can see. So it's perfect. Okay. So I have a, go a comment here from Nata Nael, I think I said that right. If not, it's just Nael. <laughs> For me, I tend to be mean to myself when I'm aware of the truth. So I've learned to be kind to self when the knowing of the truth. Yes, too much thinking blocks. Yes, that's what, that's what goes on a lot. Blocks the internal growth. I rest in the simplicity of truth, following the feeling of truth. Yes, good, yes. Um, so it's like you get this sense of untruth that that upset feeling is a sense of untruth It's like covering up the truth. So, you know, it's not I'm making it this up to get you to feel bad about yourself for having made it like obviously I made this shitty thing for myself. No, it's more like I'm making this up empowered about it because I'm making this up right now so that I can use it. Not, and not I made it up to punish myself because I'm doing shitty, mm. you know, that's how the ego would look at it. Well, look, you're a shitty manifester. Look what you manifested. Freaking lava ran over your house, for instance, you know, or look what you manifested. Now you're now, and now you're mm. going into a trailer from a house, you know, now what's going to become of you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's part of it. <laughs> and Yvette says, I want to get that tattooed on my arm. I'm making this up. That is mm. a great idea. I've seen people with a little tattoo right here that says, I am. Like, if I got one, I probably wouldn't because I don't care for the look of a tattoo on myself for some reason. But if I did, it would be, I am making this up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know? Nothing is happening. Yeah. It's because, like, if somebody bitched something, there's no one there. Not yeah. even this body. Yes, it's like it's your hand. It's like it's your own hand. Like, all the hands are your own hand. Like that. <laughs> mm. And then Christine says, what if it's all just okay? Not joy or sadness. I think it. this is what I was calling the restlessness. Yeah, it's all okay. The thing is, the sadness, it isn't real. It's an act. It's an act. It's a show. It's putting on a show. It's putting on a show. Because it's as if, it's as, it's as if you have something to be sad about. You don't need anything to be joyful about because that's you. That's the way you're created. That's you. You're created for expanding joy. You don't need anything to be joyful about. Sadness, you need something. You need something for sadness. You got to have. Yeah. You need a story. You need a story. You need a big and story. A hook to and believing it. Yes. And you have to believe in the sadness. That's the only way that's going to uh, be able to be held. Okay. So, yes, it's okay. It's not only okay, but it's actually an opportunity. 
It's, op it's an opportunity. But you know, it's like, you're not going to seize the opportunity if you don't realize what it is and what it's for. You know, if, if, if you're experiencing mad joy, not just all it is, it's just joy. You got no, you got nothing to do. You got nothing to do but celebrate. But if you are getting the, if you're getting the occurrence, it's occurring to you that you are sad, you're sensing sadness. That means you're believing something that's totally untrue. Mm -hmm. That means you're believing something that's untrue about yourself and you're acting it out. You're acting it out. It's a big ass drama show. Mm, I know. I know. It's cute. It's cute. It's a drama show. <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> and it's totally okay. As you can see, it's okay with me. It's comical, actually. It's a comedy to me. It is. It's a comedy to me. Because I know it's a show. So, you know, sure, people who would like to hold on to the sadness, they just kind of like go away from me. It's cool. You go somewhere else. They want to be happy, then they come around. That's mm -hmm. all. I I love your your postings about Dylan and the unfolding. Oh, how fun! I'm glad you're enjoying that. Yeah. I am too. I am too. It's so fun. It's so fun. So so many triggers are coming up. To, were coming up for me at first. Um, you know, it, it's so fun because they, they get seen through and then it's just like, there's so nothing like they just get seen through right away. Some of them took a couple of hours, which would make it go a little bit longer, but you know, still there's, it's all for fun. It's all for fun. You know, there's all kinds of little triggers. One of them, one of them has to do with money too, that would come up. Um, haven't seen it at all in a couple of days, but who knows if, if it comes up again, it just expands the joy even more. So no problem. Uh, one of them is the money. So he, he comes with me and, and I find out from his parents that, that, um, you know, the story is they don't have a bunch of money. So they're like, yeah, uh, at first I asked, Hey, are you guys going to be sending some money for Dylan? And they seemed to like take, take him by surprise. They didn't even think that that would be a thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah, I guess we'll talk about that, you know? And so then, so then it's like, it's like, oh yeah, we think he probably costs like a hundred bucks a month. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, you know, that's cool. I'm probably going to be spending a lot more than like more than that. But you know, if that's what you feel like paying, that's cool. So, um, so anyways, yeah. So it's like, of course these thoughts will occur to me like, oh, what if they're just taking advantage of you? Like sending their kid over to your house and you know, and that, and that's just the way for them to like save money on their kid and like give you their kid, the kid's expense, you know, that could be like a pretty good ego hook for someone. Right. Yeah. And I just start laughing. Mm -hmm. I think it's so funny. That's beautiful. Holy. I think it's so funny. It's like, it's like, oh yeah. Like you could see how you could see how the ego uses money to make it as if someone's doing something to you. Right. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And when you see that, all of that stuff, it becomes completely meaningless. Yeah. Monica asked me to tell you that you're awesome and you are the essence of I am. You are a creative creator and love is who she is. About me? You. Monica wanted to tell you that. Oh, Monica. She's such a sweetheart. Oh. Of course she is. She's you. Yes. We're all sweethearts. Thank you, Monica. Yeah. Mm. And even when I see someone, you know, they seem to be being mean. It's like, I just feel this awe. What a sweetheart. Because mm. <laughs> you know what's underneath there, the innocence. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and then that sense that, that sense that by being mean, by being mean, that's going to get them what they want. And that is just so sweet. Hmm. You know, it's like every, everyone wants the same thing. Everyone wants the exact same thing. And it's like, some of us are just seriously unskilled at the moment. And that's, what's so sweet. It's like, ah, it's unskilled at getting what we want. It's kind of like a little kid throwing a fit, mm. casting judgment or anything like that. Right. Yeah. I saw Christine says, 
Don't you have a home in Florida? Yes, I do have a condo that we bought in Florida. Um, and the projection is that um, that's the safe place. That's the, um, because we're supposed to be going over the road to see the country, but I can see the mind using the place in Florida as a escape to get out of this fear of the unknown. See, it wants to be safe. I can see it. It doesn't feel safe going into the camper because so many things can go wrong, go bad in the future. All of that, it's, it's just projecting all this fear <laughs> when none yeah, of it is happening. Krishna Murthy says that Krishna Murdy says it's not fear of the unknown, it's fear of losing the known. It's the real right. issue. Oh, of the future. that's you are the so much afraid truth. of the future as you are let go of the past. That is it, Bob. That is it. Of fear of the known. The, the known is being lost. Yes. I was attached to that's, this this known for 34 years in this one mm -hmm. house with the same uh, people around, community, all, roads, grocery stores, post office, all of it. Yeah. It's like a death of sorts. Yes, it's what it feels like. That's mm -hmm. what it feels like, which there is no such thing as death. It's only the ego. The mind made me believe that it was born and it's going to die. Yep. And, and all that stuff that you built up over 34 years, that was all a setup for this moment so that you can get this perception so that you can see through it. It's all a big setup. It was never going to last. I mean, I mean, who was making it up that it was going to last? Holy shit. It was not meant to last. It was just meant to set you up for this. Mm. Because I've asked for it. I've oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I wanted to see you're through You're making it. it up. You're making it up to see through it. That's the whole reason you're making it up. Yeah. But there's a lot of kicking and screaming from this. <laughs> well, it's nothing, though. Yeah. You know? It's just you're making it into something, and you don't have to make it into anything. It's just, it's just fun stuff. It's like right now, you make it into something. Yep. You talk about things, you, you talk about things, maybe you talk with your husband about it too, about how bummed out and stuff you are, you know? And it's like, and, and it's like, and that's what I mean about when you're shrouding your own light, your own light, it's like it can't expand outward, it can't extend to everyone else and be that shelter for everyone else and letting them know that it's, it's okay, it's really okay. Uh. You know, all of a sudden you're in a position where you need someone to tell you it's okay because you're buying into all these things that are not true and just hiding your own light when that can always come from within and shine outward. So everyone, you know, people could be upset about something and look at you and be like, oh, you know, I see that all the time with my friends and stuff like that. Like even like basic things where someone will go come up to me like, why I was like, oh my God, oh. I, I needed this and this and this right away or something like that. And, and, and I'll, I'll just, the, the response will just be like, okay, you know, like, and, and, and I, I could see them. They're like, oh, and my friends leave and go, oh, and just calm down. Yeah. All right. Family members too. I'll see it in the, you know, and cause it's all in the perception. It's all in the perception. The whole perception is coming out of you. So it's like when you're, when you're able to be calm and at ease with whatever is it, whatever seems to be occurring, it helps everyone else too, because then they don't feel like they have to worry about you. Well, that's it. That's Peter's worrying about me. Sure. Me. Sure. That's the setup. So, 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 you know, when you're buying into these worldly things, these worldly illusions, all of a sudden, you know, you're just, you're, you're just 
there to be exa an example to yourself and everyone else that the world has power over you. Right. See? That's why I said, like, when I start to get a hook, the first thing I think about is my friends. Like, how is this going to be for my friends? So I want to drag my friends down, <laughs> my family. But I want to drag everyone down, my mom, everyone. <laughs> you know? It's like, it's like, it's like your joy, your joy helps everyone. It's really, it's not a selfish kind of thing is at all. Like people think when they're first going into it, I know when I first went into it, I was like, wow, this is a really selfish kind of thing. Oh, well, I just really need to be selfish right now because I'm having too much suffering. I just have to be selfish right now, you know? And it seemed like that at first That's where it's insane. like taking care of myself like this is like being very selfish, but then you start to see as you're uplifted in joy all the time. It really helps everyone to calm down. Mm. It changes well, the whole vibe. Uh, my girlfriend said to me, um, well, now you've come back down to reality. Uh-huh. Yep. We were afraid for you. You were out there. And now you're sane with all the other insane people. Yes. That's that funny? Exactly what you said to me. Don't you love it? Don't you love it? You've gone back into the asylum with everyone else. So yes. now they're like, yes, oh. he's back. Isn't that fun? Well, that's what they say. Positive is unrealistic. Negative is realistic. Yeah, they've all been waiting for you to crash and burn, Lori, so you can join yes. us in the asylum. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah, but the, the idea I had was that uh, there's, there's this psychological uh, uh, makeup called inflation and deflation. So your ego gets inflated into some grandiosity about yourself. Yeah. And then that switches over to deflation where then you're in depression and you put yourself down. It's like a manic depressive state. The ego yeah. goes back and forth to inflation, grandiosity, and then deflation into depression and negativity. So, you know, it's like I saw you, you were doing your own little webinars and you were feeling good and, and that you were uh, kind of helping people and people had all these positive reactions yes. to your videos and everything. Yes. It seemed like uh, there was a part of you was getting a little puffed up about it. Yes. You know? And yes. so then now, you're, now you've, you've swung to the other extreme to where your ego is deflated you're into depression, you're into uh, dwelling in all these uh, negative uh, fears and scenarios. Yeah. And it seemed like it was just a kind of a reaction to this, to this other state of mind, uh, inflated grandiose, yes. grandiose state of mind that you were in at one point. Yeah, yeah. You so got you to, so, you, so you get to a state that's beyond that grandiosity what A Course in Miracles calls it is grandeur, then that's invulnerable. Then it's invulnerable to worldly effects. So it does Yeah. Matter. Right. There's not the swinging mm -hmm. back and forth. Yeah. As long as I have this, I'm okay. Or as long as I have that, I'm okay. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is, I can tell this is a huge lesson. Yep. Huge. Yep. But anytime you can pop your sweet little head right up. Mm. And even in the midst of, you know, some of your friends telling you, welcome back. You'd be like, oh, I'm just visiting. I'm just mm -hmm. visiting. It's only temporary. Yeah, I'm just visiting right now. I'm just visiting the insane asylum to make sure I don't want to reside there. Right. And <laughs> let that memory burn. Yep. It's burning. It's burning. Whoo, it's burning. Yep. Yeah, because it's all made up. There, your your uh, financial and physical uh, situation is completely good. You don't have any. Your health is good. You've got money. Well, that part's uh, irrelevant, too. That's why, you know, that part, Bob. In Florida. Bob, that, that part right there that you're talking about? Of course it's irrelevant. That's the world. Totally irrelevant. Yeah. Totally irrelevant because, you know, the, the thing is, when you start talking about what you have that you should be happy about, 
you know, that's also venturing into delusion. Like when you talk about like you have this and this and this, it's not like that at all. You know, it could seem totally, it could be seem totally irrational to people why Lori is upset right now. You know, people might go, hey, there's people starving in China or something, that kind of story, <laughs> Africa, whatever. And look at her, she's, yeah. a, she's got an extra condo, she just sold a house. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter. The suffering is all the same. The suffering is all the same, all the way across the board. So it just doesn't matter what the story or scenario is. When the suffering comes along, it's, it's coming from that sense of separation. And whatever we perceive as the reason for it isn't really the reason anyways. So, you know, it, it, it really frees your mind up and does you a lot of good to not even consider what it seems like anyone has or what they should be happy about or anything like that, because that's just calling up the ego again. You know, that's just calling up the ego to, to say, Oh yeah, well they have, they have enough. So they shouldn't be like that. Like one person might be justified in feeling like Lori does, but then not another person. And really the thing is none of it is justified. It's all a fucking act. It's, it's all, all worldly. That's more worldly things. That's right. Yeah. And it doesn't, and there's no reason for it. There's no reason for it. So there's no sense at all in even calling up what appears to be the cause. You know, it's, it seems like it's benign. I know when I'm talking about it, it seems like to people like that would be benign. But I'm telling you, that is a total ego inflation to even start thinking about, to even going down the path of what they seem to have. That, that, that could or should make them feel happy because that's just not the way it goes at all. The fear is coming from within and, it, and the reason is not a real reason. It's never a real reason. It's so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is that's bumming you out is, is not coming from the surface. That's right. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. That's what I say. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. And when I, when I find myself saying coulda, should have or would have because they're such delusional words and i play that game with dylan um uh, let's see it was it that sunday sunday we went um went to the beach for a party and we had two boogie boards one of them is really what one of them's really really new um and, it, and it's a real nice one like i went to a, a boogie board shop and it probably paid over a hundred bucks for it or something and um, and Braun had the newer one, which I got fitted for him specifically. Dylan was playing with a, a, an older one that we had laying around. So at the end of the time, the newer one is gone, just completely gone. No one knows where it is. Um, I didn't think about it for all these hours. We're at a party. The place was packed. And then by the time we left, it was kind of empty. Braun had been in the car for like an hour because he got burnt out in the sun. He was playing video games in the car. And we went for the boogie board and it wasn't there. And, and Dylan goes, darn it. I could have been using that one or something like that. They, or, or something like that. They didn't take the one I was using. And immediately what pops out of my mouth is, you should have been using bronze board. And then, as, and then I go, and, and then I laugh and I go, coulda, shoulda, woulda. You know, we kind of got an inside joke like that, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda. Like it pop, it'll pop out. Like even if it comes into my mind, you know, it's just kind of playful. Like nothing's wrong. Like I'm not grading myself on how I talk or anything like that. But it, you know, these triggers come because it's like it's like, oh my goodness, he only used it twice. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, it, it's like it, you you could have or should have. I forgot what the word was, but it was one of those. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. That's right. Whenever we hear that word. I mean, it coulda, shoulda, woulda. We just kind of make a joke of it because there's nothing like that. That's like totally not a thing. And you tell Braun, you know, hey, Braun, your, your, your boogie board's gone. He's like, oh, okay. Nothing is a bummer. <laughs> well, they, they talk about suffering. It's like a gas chamber that in, in the chamber, you can release gas. It's, you could release a little bit of gas or a lot of gas, but whatever the amount of gas, it completely fills the chamber. Uh -huh. So you can have a little bit of a problem or whatever, uh, or you can have a big uh, insurmountable problem, but uh, whatever 
amount of pain or a problem that you're experiencing, it's filling the whole chamber of your mind. A, a little a hangnail can be as much suffering as someone, you know, dying of cancer, because that's, that's it, your whole right. mind is, is, is filled with it. <clears throat> So yeah, it doesn't matter what this circumstance is on the surface. It's all within yourself that's that it, it's happening. I'm talking to um, different people. I've talked to, you know, friends of mine and stuff. There's a friend of mine who's um, having the same feelings, completely yeah. different scenario, completely different scenario. But when we connect... It's the same, same exact projection of future. Oh, geez. I've seen that a lot. So yeah. many people have come up with, have come up to me with the same kind of thing lately. And it seems like something's just about to break in the, in the hologram. You know what? That's what hope. There's so many people that I've been talking to that are in the same it's, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Everybody wants to see through. Yeah. yeah, that's that's it. And, you know, the veil just keeps on getting thinner and thinner. And that's why, you know, here here's the thing. You start to get, you start to get like a, a sense of the bliss that's beneath this thin layer of perception that we have. We have this thin layer of perception and that we start to see, you start to see that it's just, it's just like barely anything. And then beneath that is this deep well of bliss. And on this thin layer of perception, it'll give you this hook like, oh my God, oh my God, something's wrong. And, you'll, and, and when you sink back into all this bliss, the sensations, they just get more and more joyful. It's so worth it. You get happy to have a sense that something is going to go really wrong. You're like, yay, because you know what's coming next. It's like, oh, this is a blessing, and I'm making this up for the blessing. I'm making it up for the blessing. Wow. You're doing good? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm making it up for the blessing. Yep, that's all it's for. So it's basically not buying into any of the thoughts. That's right. Just refuse to buy into it. Yeah. I'm making this up, damn it. Yeah. And I've said a bunch of times, deny the evidence. Deny the evidence. I've been, I've actually told others that. I actually told somebody that today. Don't, yeah. don't believe the evidence. Yeah, so so that's how you that's how you know too. You have not gone back into the at least you haven't committed yourself to the insane insane asylum. You are really you are really just visiting those friends because if you're still able if you're still able to speak the truth to other people, you have not committed yourself to the insane asylum. And 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 you still and you still and you still know you know you know. You know, you know that you know. It's just that you feel like you can't even accept your own advice right now. Right. Exactly. That's okay. That's okay. It's just a phase. Just a phase. Yeah. I, today, this talk, which I, I'm, got it being recorded, so I can listen to it again tonight. Is is the best I've felt in a long time. All when right. When first came on, I felt, as soon as you started talking, I don't remember what you said, but I could see all of that shit that I'm believing in it is in front of me. It's mm -hmm. in front. Yeah. And ever since we've been, it's just, ah. Uh, Boy, oh boy. There's some, there's some hope. There's some hope. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even, that's not even, it's not even hope. It's, it's a remembering. It's a remembering. And it's bringing tears. 
<laughs> oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yay. Yeah. Because mm, I haven't been able to cry. I haven't, it's just been so numb. There isn't even any feeling. It's just so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, a problem is just an unattended situation. So we've been attending to your situation like surgeons. We've been operating and extracting <laughs> like surgeons. All of that uh, <laughs> cancer, <laughs> all of that fear, all of that. Is, yes. You guys are my doctors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, thank I mean, you. you Oh, thank you. What? How what? You Dylan brought you some water. Yeah. Aww. So sweet. What a sweetheart. He is. He's really sweet. He's a sweet, sweet boy. Is he? Yeah. He's a really sweet dude. Yeah. Yep. He just has a, he has, a, he's like a bundle of energy, you know, he's a big bundle of energy. Mm. And when something, I, I notice when something seems to be like a big deal or a problem, right, Dylan? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, dude, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to be all right, buddy. Keep saying that inside. It's okay. It's okay. That's yeah. helped me. Hope's words. It's okay. It's okay. It works out. Now he's a little computer man. Nothing is a bummer. Nothing is a bummer. So Yvette says, oh, that's why I returned to AA to visit my friends. Loving it. I knew it and I had to hear it here. Mahalo wow. Nui. Beautiful. <laughs> yep. Yeah, go back to I'm an addict. I'm hopeless. I'm a hopeless case. This is you're like, oh, okay. That's fun. Okay, so I have the question that I was talking about since earlier. <laughs> Way earlier. What do I do with it now? Maybe it's over on this page. Oh yeah, it just popped up and then it went away. Where is this guy? Oh, here it is. Okay. I've been getting into ho -po ho -pono -pono. It's Not spelled like that, but I know what he means. Let me see where we are on this thing. We're at, uh, Oh, it doesn't say. About an hour in. Okay. Yeah. I can let him know where it is. So I've been getting into Ho'oponopono. For, for those of you who don't know Ho'oponopono, it's a Hawaiian term. And the short definition of it is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And to me, you can shorten that even more and just say, I'm making this up. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I've been getting into whole pono pono. So you could say I've been getting into the idea that I'm just making this up and uh, just taking responsibility for whatever comes up in me and thanking it and loving it. But my blood sugar still spike was diagnosed at, at eight with diabetes type one or type one diabetes. Last two years since moving home with mom sugars run high. I have just been loving everything. But if I eat any fruit, Sugar, carbs, it spikes sugar. He told me this when we were going to Ed's to fix your car. Oh, yeah, that's right. I read it to you. Isn't it fun to hear it again? Okay. So there's, here's a good point right here. I have been loving everything, but, okay, if you just leave one thing out, if you just leave one thing out, that's the thing that you're going to use to make suffering. Okay. That's the thing, whatever, whatever it is that you hold out from what you're loving. I'm loving everything, but if I eat any sugar, fruit, carbs, it spikes sugar. Okay? That's a story. That's a story. It may occur to you, it may occur to you that if you eat any burger, burger, fruit, sugar, carbs, that's not for me to know right now. I'm on wisdom dialogue. Let someone else know that. Thanks. Right on. They'll be stoked. <laughs> Look, that's not that's a story that that's that that's spiking the sugar none of that stuff is actually spiking the sugar you're making up that that stuff is spiking the sugar okay so you you're loving and if you're loving everything 
you're also loving that you're making up that you're eating these things and it's spiking your sugar because that's an appearance. That's an appearance that it's, a, that it's spiking sugar, that there is any sugar to be spiked or anything like that. I feel I can heal my say, myself, but would, would love to do it now. Okay, so the kind of healing that you're talking about is not really the kind of healing that's available, okay? Because there's no healing for the body. The body isn't unhealed in the first place. That, that's the thing. If you're, if you're making this, this illness, this whatever this you would call this thing, I guess it's called diabetes. I think that's the name for it. You're making this diabetes thing into a real thing and then you want to try to heal it that's where you're getting it you're getting into some sticky business because you can't heal anything like that because you're making you're holding out an illusion your body the illusion as if it's what needs healing it is not what needs healing it's the mind and, it, and the the body sense the body sense of it being of have of it having this diabetes thing and sugar spiking and stuff like that, that body sense is just a symbol of a diseased mind. It's just a symbol of that. So when, the, when, when you're focused on healing for the body, you're not really getting to the underlying cause. And you may, may or may not have any success to, in, in getting an effect as if the body has been healed. You may or may not have any success in that. But irrespective, either way, either way, it's not one bit helpful. It's not one bit helpful because it's not being one bit helpful because you're not using it. You're not using it for the purpose that it's set out for. It's actually being set out in the mind like that for a specific purpose that's really important purpose. That's the whole reason for time. It's the whole reason that you would make anything occur at all is to use time for undoing the guilt in the mind. When you're using time for undo undoing the guilt in the mind, you actually don't give a rat's ass about your diabetes because it's not there. It's not there. It's just, it's just something that you're making up. You may, be, you may find yourself taking care of the diabetes in whatever way that is. Maybe you find yourself not eating in as much sugar or something like that. You may find yourself taking care of the diabetes, but it's not something that you're, you're trying to heal, for instance, because it's not, there's not anything to heal. There's not anything there. It's all, it's, it's all make-believe. In fact, there's not even a body. There's not even a body. So it's like you can go through the motions. You can find yourself going through the emotions of injecting yourself with insulin or whatever, because that's just part of the play. But it's not something that's going to be like, I want this healed. You won't even care when you're, when you're focused on healing what it is that's actually disease. Because when you're focused on healing what it is that's actually disease, and it's never a body, there's a hint, it's never anything like that. It's not your financial life either. It's nothing like that. It's always that dis-ease in the mind that's making an upset feeling, a sense that you're not supported right now by spirit, a sense that your only purpose isn't for expanding joy. That's the only disease. So, so why would it matter and who would it matter to whether sugar is spiking all over the place and you're injecting yourself with insulin? It's like this poor me stuff. It's all an act. It's a total act. You know, you can just laugh at yourself as kind of like me when I, uh, when I'm going for a cold shower, I'm going for a little, oh, cause there's no hot water available. I'm going, I'm like, oh, oh, nothing's actually happening. There's no body. There's no water. Nothing's actually happening, you know? It's like, oh, I gotta take some deep breaths and get through this now. And it's like, you're laughing, you're, got, you're smiling. You always have that inner smile. You allow yourself to connect with that and you know it. You don't care about any of this. It's what's saying, I wanna heal this now is, is really saying the opposite. I wanna keep this thing as a trigger for myself so I can pretend like something's wrong. You know, well, that voice doesn't want to heal anything, really doesn't want to heal anything. And especially, you know, when that voice is saying, I want to heal this now, and it's talking about some kind of a, uh, some kind of a event that seems to be happening on the surface, 
it's relating to something like that, it's totally distracting you from healing that can be happening now. It's totally distracting you from that. And that's a, really when you talk about something happening, that's the only thing that can happen because the body, you know, the, the body isn't real and the mind's 100% creative. The mind is, isn't even capable of making anything that can hurt you. It's just that you wanted to believe it could so you can make impressions on yourself and be like, wow, that really does seem like it hurt me. That just hurt me. Someone just slapped me. Now your mind can make impressions like that to make it seem like you can be hurt, but really it's dreamlike. So Niall says, can you elaborate more? They're not even a body. Okay, so the body, what we perceive, it's no different from anything else in the illusion. It's no different from anything else in this hologram. Each one of us, and there's only one of us, but I'm saying each one of us, you know, it's kind of like a microcosm of consciousness. You can say there's a uniqueness to each of us, but we're not separate and we know it. We know it. We know it. You can say deep down. For, for some of us, it's not so deep down. <laughs> But the more layers of confusion are on top of it, the deeper down it is <laughs> that, you know, we're all, we're all one. We're all one. There's uniqueness to us, but we're all one. You can say that in the garden, um, in heaven, whatever you want to call it, um, you can look at it as right underneath this thin layer of perception is reality. In reality, we can have the, we can have the experience of our uniqueness, but no misperceiving. In fact, no perceiving, okay, no perceiving. In this illusion, there's misperceiving and there's true perceiving. Um, true perceiving is just taking whatever it is that's arising that seems to be, that seems, appears to be outside of you and you can perceive it purely. You can see, perceive it purely because you know that it's all one thing and you know what it's for. That's a pure perception. You know exactly what it's for. You don't get a misperception as if something's actually wrong, something's happening, someone's doing something to me, I have a body that's separate, something like that. So there's no body, just like there's no world. It's a, if, you, if, you go, if you go real high up in, in uh, science, you find out, you know, even in science, this is all a manifestation of mind. If you don't even go that high up in science and you just go to high school, you know, in high school now, even the kids in high school are learning that all of what we perceive as matter, it's not really solid. It's not really solid. You know, they, they even learn in high school that when they go to sit on a chair, um, before, their, before the, their butt hits the chair, there's nothing there to support it. When their butt comes into contact with it and never fully even comes into contact, there's always like a really thin layer of space it never even, even though it feels like it's being smushed down on the chair, it's not even touching it. It's all mental. It's all totally mental. So everyone, you know, everyone's going to get sooner or later and probably pretty quickly now that it is all mental and the body doesn't even really exist and it's not capable of being sick or well. It's all a manifestation of the mind. The body is mostly space. Um, and, and you can say that it's all space and the matter that, that, it, uh, that it becomes, like when you touch it, it feels like something, like you, it feels like you can't go through it. The matter that becomes, it's just mind, that's solidified mind. And so we start to get more and more that it's solidified mind. And as we start to get more and more, we're going to start seeing that, we're start, going to start seeing that more and more in the reflection. But that's not really so important. That's not really so important. It's fun. It's fun to acknowledge that. But that's not really so important as breaking down this illusion that we're in some kind of a survival thing and that we have to defend ourselves against each other. That's the thing that's popping up every day. And taking the, the, the body as a solid thing is definitely a part of that. But I'm, what I'm saying is don't make your goal to be able to do this and have your hand go through your body. Yes, that it will occur, but, but you know, the, the way it's going to occur is to eliminate first, we're kind of like working it backward to eliminate first this idea that we've extrapolated from this body being solid as in now it needs protection and it needs me to protect it. 
does not need any protection. It's an, exp it's an expression of your mind. The whole solid of solidity of it and everything, it's an expression of your mind. So when you realize that you don't need any, any protection for it, these ideas that come up that are just like kind of like almost like regular day-to-day -day stuff, you know, like I could even relate it to, um, I've been, I, I've been having an email issue for, um, or I guess say an email issue has been occurring to me for like a month where the email hasn't been going smoothly in my particular account, you know, and you can take that as if that's aggravating. You can take that as if that's aggravating, or you could take it as an, Oh, okay. This is something I can use. This is something I can use. And anytime, you know, you find yourself on technical support with it or anything like that, or doing the thing or doing the things for it, you're watching your body's energy field and you're watching how you're getting reactions as if you're victimized somehow. I was laughing today because I called this other email company. Finally, I said, okay, you know what? You guys are sweet. I love you guys, but I'm gonna try another service now. So I go to another service and I tell them, okay, I'm looking for something that's gonna work with my situation. Here's my situation, and here's the and, and here's what's been going on. And and you know, the guy on the other uh, on the other end, and it's like it's so it's so choreographed, it's so choreographed, you just see it. It's like, oh, you don't deserve that. You deserve much better than that. And I'm just like cracking up, you know. And I, I don't think I don't think you realize like why I'm cracking up or anything, but it's just so funny to me because it's like, oh yeah, of course I'm telling myself, you deserve better than that. You should have email that works. And it's funny because I don't know if I, I don't know if it's actually gonna show itself as working or not, but then he gives me the proposal and everything. It's like half of what I'm paying right now too. So I'm like, oh wow, that's interesting, you know. But is you see how these different projections wanna come about that as if something that something has gone wrong. And even when I'm on technical support with the with that company. Um, the email email company, I have an exchange service, and and I'm going, hey, you know, we already tried all these different things. Do you guys really think that you have a way that you can fix it? You know, and just like watching the energy and how it's and how it's going to go into people are apologetic and it's going to go into victim wants to go into victimization and just in laughing because all of that is only occurring because of the desire for the body to be real. I mean, that we even need an email to communicate in the first place, that we even need this Zoom to communicate in the first place. I know we don't need these things. You know, and the thought has occurred to me, wow, Hope, you know, at the rate you seem to be going, what if you just completely run out of money and then you can't even afford to do, do Zoom anymore? What if you can't even afford to um, to make those, make those cute, have to make those cute little videos and those posts from Gail and all those different stuff like that. And it's like, it's just laughable to me because I know we don't need this stuff to communicate. You know, I know we don't really need this stuff to communicate. I'm in communication with everyone and we're all in communication with each other. No matter if we're getting online, no matter if we're getting the email or not, it doesn't really matter if we get the email. It doesn't really matter if wisdom dialogues happens and it comes online like this, it's not, it's not, because it's not really happening. It's actually occurring in the imagination and there's nothing that's better or worse. See? So it's like when you, when, when you realize that you're all, you're making it all up just to make the body seem solid. It's a body game. It's for making the body seem like it's real and it needs something and you have to go out and get it. That's what upholds the whole world. So that's what all of this, even the most petty stuff that you might see, you know, seem things really, think it's like really petty and it's, and, and it's, um, it's benign. And no, that's not how it is. It's all for healing. It's all for healing. Well, that was a download. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you for asking the question. Wow. Now, when they talk about that mind is like the, a trinity, just like there's steam, water, and ice, it's all H2O. So you could uh, translate that into spirit, mind, and body, or spirit, mind, and matter. You know, there's it comes from first it comes from the invisible and then it forms into like in the clouds it uh, in the invisible sky then all of a sudden a cloud forms and then it the the gaseous uh 
cloud turns into fluid, turns into water, and then that water solidifies and turns into ice. So uh, it's, but it's all H2O, it's all the same substance that just becomes denser. So uh, that's why uh, the uh, mind is in control because it's all mind to begin with. It just is a denser uh, formations. Yep, that's right. That's right, it's all one thing again. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go get a charger because the battery seems to be going down much faster today than normal. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, then this guy was talking about Ho'oponopono. So there's the uh, Ialiakala Hugh Lin, the self-identity Ho'oponopono. Usually Ho'opono is about a mediator, an elder or a kahuna that is settling a dispute between two parties. But in the self-identity Ho'oponopono, it's in this book, Zero Limits, uh, that there's a trinity of family within each of us. There's the higher self, the father consciousness, uh, your conscious mind, which is your mother consciousness, and your subconscious, which is your inner child. And he says all of your problems are in your subconscious, your inner child. Your inner child has information and data and programming, uh, unhealed memories that then manifest in financial problems, physical problems, relationship problems. All of your problems are due to this unloved, unacknowledged, inner child and so then he has this beautiful inner child meditation you can see it on youtube it's 16 minutes where you 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 get in touch with your inner child and you ask it permission to uh hug it and apologize to it use that whole pono pono uh mantra i love you i'm sorry please forgive me thank you to your inner child and then you call upon your higher self your father consciousness to come and help you to heal and release the, the pain and the suffering of the inner child. And you're the mother, you're the go between the, the father and the inner child. So um, a lot of people feel that that's uh, uh, a good uh, analogy for healing, the self identity ho'oponopono. Yeah. Basically comes down to I'm making this up. I was just. I was just wondering if that would, I'm making it up because going back is like that even happened. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like, it, it's like as if you could say, you know, the, the idea of the, the idea of the inner child is just this sense like I'm scared. I need an adult to tell me that everything's okay. Right. You know, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a child being afraid of something that looks like a boogeyman over in the corner and you know, you turn on the light and you find out it's a guitar with a with a sheet thrown over it or something or maybe their coat's hanging on it. It's like, "Oh, that's what it is." Okay. Woo! You know, when the child is the child is calm again and it's like that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that that relief that comes from that, you know, that caring, loving, what Bob was talking about, like this motherly kind of caring, loving source that's to, there to tell you it's okay. Mm. The comforter. Yeah. It's right. okay. Nothing, there's nothing to be afraid of here. There's nothing to be afraid of here. Everything, even the deepest pain that you experience here, even the deepest pain it's gonna roll up and be completely forgotten. Nothing, totally nothing. There's nothing to be afraid of. And it's the fear that brings on the pain. Pain is a manifestation of fear. No fear, no pain. No fear, no pain, no matter what it looks like. You know, in the story of Jesus, he's, he's nailed to the cross, right? In the Bible, they paint a picture of him being all, all in pain and stuff like that. But you know what? That's not the case. That's just how the ego would expect him to be. Mm. That's how the ego would expect a person nailed to a cross with nails in their hands and feet to be. But, but a, mind, a, a mind that's, that's pure, 
that's pure, that's purified of all guilt, let's say, all of our minds are pure, but purified of this thought, this thought of guilt cannot experience pain. It doesn't experience pain and it doesn't matter what it looks like on the surface. It does not matter what it looks yeah, like. Born again Christians though believe he had to suffer and it, to, for our sins. You know, Mel Gibson depicted it so well in, in the, his Christ movie, you know, it's like it was, it, Mel Gibson has a thing about, uh, you know, depicting uh, horrible, uh, you know, mistreatment and everything. So, well, that's the so ego yeah, of course. Right. But G Jesus, he, like you say, he had no guilt. So he might have died and crucified, but he didn't suffer. You know, yeah. he's just, he's just it, it was just his body, you know, that was uh, having the sensations, but he was above his body. And that's how he could resurrect and ascend. He was above his body. Yeah, the sensations are it just interpreted. They're interpreted through the lens of fear. That's why there's people and I've been one of them can have a painless birth, for instance. It's like the, the sensations are not what we make them out to, you know, they're not really what we make them out to be. The sensations are just sensations. We make them out to be pain out of it through a lens. We're looking through a lens of fear, though. It must be painful if your body's opening up like that, for instance, or it must be painful if you're getting nailed to a cross. It seems like that, but it's only that the pain only comes from guilt. That's all it comes from. People go, go, well, what about newborn babies? And it's like, there isn't any difference. They look like they're small. They're new to the world. They have to learn about the world and stuff like that. But before the world, there's still that guilty self-belief. There's still that guilty self-belief and that's what's playing out. And that's why anyone's going through any kind of, any kind of pain, but really there's no pain. It's all, it, and it'll all be shown to you. It'll all be shown to you that it was all just nothing and even as you're like writhing in pain, you're acting. And that's what I remind myself of. You know, you know, whenever I found myself in any kind of pain, in any kind of whatever, it's like, I know I'm acting something out. I remind myself I'm making this up, I'm acting this out. And that lets the body sense get so much lighter. I don't need, and it's not like I need pity or something like that, you know. Uh, don't need anything. Don't need anything. It's okay because it's something that's showing itself and I know what it's for. And the less you want to be dramatic about pain, the less you're going to be calling forth pain for yourself. Like it gets written into your script. And that less you want to be dramatic about it, the less pain you're going to perceive. See, like, say you get a pain in the neck. Say your neck gets stiff or something like that. And you can feel it. You can massage it. It feels stiff. And then you go with a thought that, that goes into, oh, how did I get this stiff neck? Is it because of this or that? Is, even, is it because I've been worrying? Is it because I've been worrying? Listen to this, you guys. This is important. No, it's not because you get, you've been worrying. That gives power to the mind to create something that's an illusion. Your mind has no power like that. It's not because you were stressing out about anything. That is not why you have a pain in the neck. It's not because of anything that your mind created or anything like that. It's because you're dreaming about it. You're dreaming it up right now and you're holding on to it with the idea that something caused it, including your own mind. Whether it happens to be you slept wrong or you stressed out, and that's the reason why you're getting a pain in the neck. No, that's a projection of ego. It's a projection of guilt right now. And if you and, and if you want to make it about something that you did before and make yourself feel guilty more about it, then you're not going to be able to to perceive it as it is, as it truly is. So you get the true true perception of it about how it's just projected from a guilty self-belief right now, when you admit you're making it up, you're gonna start to see what you're holding it onto that you actually have some authority over, you know, that you could actually make another choice about. You cannot make another choice about what you think your mind did to you from stressing out in the past, even if it was five minutes ago, okay? 
because it comes down to right now and look how the ego works it's, it truly is like seek and do not find like a course in miracle says seek but do not find it is like that it is like that in the ego's game because look how it'll go okay that means i need to stop stressing out oh damn it i can't stop stressing out so i guess i'm just going to keep on making all this pain for myself oh like that <laughs> see but it really comes down to right now right now i'm projecting this i'm making this up that's it and it's playful it's so playful then you can get the feeling effect of having believed that you didn't make it up that it was really just happening to you that it's just happening to you. you get the feeling effect that it's oh like this is just happening to me my body's just doing this or my mind my my mind was thinking wrong before i was too stressed out so that's how, how it that's why oh it's just right now i'm making I, i'm making this assumption about myself it's not true i'm mistaken i'm mistaken right now show it to me show it to me right now it's not how i'm gonna stop stressing out or something like that you're not stressing out you're not capable of stressing out that's not what gives you a pain in the neck it's just it, it it's just misbelief it's misbelief it's mis misunderstanding about who you are and it's projected right now that means healing can happen right now these things can be forgotten in an instant you forget you even had a pain in the neck it's funny like that so it's all truly just impersonal passing energies that we are collapsing into meaning yes that's a very good way to put it thank you josh i appreciate that yes okay all right, Christine, you go to sleep. I love you. <laughs> My East Coast peeps are getting tired. My East Coast peeps, it's like 1035 for them over there. Not that time is a real thing. But I know what I'm usually I'm usually passed out by that time. I don't know what it is. I'm usually passed out by that time. Two in the morning? That's a different story. Yeah, I noticed your post. <laughs> yeah, you you're up, yeah. Yulia's with me. She's an East Coaster. She's she's going. Yeah, girl. Yay. So the feeling effect. Yes. When you say get the feeling effect, okay. So I'm getting a lot of feeling. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. A lot of feeling. Yeah. Like almost constant contraction get in that gut you know really constricting and okay i'm getting the would that be getting the feeling effect yes and no oh. if you have to ask if you have to ask probably not you know you sense these you you have these sensations you have these sensations of the um, gut and stuff like that and these different things but then at the same time if you're getting that sensation and you're using it to self attack that's not really letting yourself get the feeling effect so you could be still attacking yourself in your mind like I should be doing it different I shouldn't be feeling this that kind of stuff yeah trying to push it away resisting it yeah yeah so that's not the same it's just like ah just like a, a surrender to it that's, you know what, that's, the word surrender has come up so much in my mind lately. Mm -hmm. I am just not, okay, so it's just like diving into it, maybe? You can say, uh, you can say it's like uh, the sense, the sense of something being, being wrong, like the gripping and everything like that. That comes from a holding on. It's like you're it's it's like you're reaching out in thought and you're grabbing on to these different things. You're grabbing on to these different ideas. Yeah. So it's like a constriction. You're yes. constricting. It's a, it's like your body's a symbol of your mind constricting around these ideas. Yes. Okay. Yes. So so it's like you're getting the feeling of that constriction only. And you're not pursuing thoughts about it. So you're pursuing, that's why I say the mental component is I'm making this up because that stops those projecting thoughts right in their track. Oh. It's, it stops them right in their tracks. It just, it stops them from, you remember what I talked about? It's like it projects upward in a circle. 
and then down and it supports the self-belief and then it, and then it comes and makes another feeling and then it projects it's like it's going around and around it's like this wheel going around you know yeah. and and it's like and and it, it's like if you just you you feel that you're feeling upset and stuff like that and you think that you're getting the feeling effects because you're feeling this upset feeling and oh it just keeps on going on and on and on and on and never even gets exciting or anything you know oh, it's, it's not even exciting to feel this and it's it's just that there's not a willingness to you know for me i would say to keep on it that you're making this up keep on that that you are making this up and you're making it up for joy you're making it up for seeing through and you know eventually it'll show itself but you keep on getting in all these thoughts around I'm making it up that are fear thoughts that are holding it in place and you're believing them and in those instances you're trusting those thoughts more than you're trusting the thought that you're making it up yeah 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 okay I got it yeah I got it so get that feeling with the thought that you're making it up until it brings you to laughter. Okay. I've gone straight from crying to laughter in a couple seconds. You know, I've done that too. I've back in the past when there really wasn't anything going on like this. <laughs> nothing's going on. That's the thing. Going that's on, the nothing's going yeah, on. See, you see how that's a story too. So yes, you know, I saw it. Yeah, it. It, goes, it goes, you know, not like this. Like, this is something now. That's how the ego's game. Like, oh, now we got something. Yeah. There's nothing. It's still nothing. It's still nothing, yeah. Yeah, it's been nothing all along, and it's still nothing. Okay. This isn't bigger than another one. See, that, and that's another thing, you know, um, bringing up the Course of Miracles. A Course of Miracles, again, um, you know, it talks about how there's no hierarchy. You know, there's no hierarchy of illusions. It's not like some are more important or bigger than other. Oh, this one, this one's a doozy. <laughs> As if this one's harder than the email not functioning correctly. Right, right. It's all the same. It's all the same. That's why, that's why there's no, that, that's why there's no limit to healing. The healing is all the same because it's all one thing. When you recognize that it's all one thing and it's all for one thing, then anything you can, you can have the healing in anything. And basically the healing is that expansion of joy in whatever it is that's being perceived. The expansion of joy in whatever is being perceived. Yes. Because it's all a benefit. It's all a benefit. <laughs> it's all a benefit. Yeah. Good one, Bob. <laughs> yeah well they say laughter and crying it's uh the same release you know laughter is comedy crying is tragedy tragedy comedy so there's that fine line you know between tragedy and comedy you slip on the banana peel and you fall and it seems like a tragedy but then it's that 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 tension then it's a release of the, the laughter then it becomes uh, the tragedy transforms into comedy into into laughter so it's all one energy, but one is uh, a downer and one's an upper. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know it's like it, it's like the the comedy I've seen yeah I've seen a lot of comedy I love comedy I've always loved comedy I used to watch comedy shows when I was a little kid when there were just a couple channels on um, I'd catch the comedy shows Laverne and Shirley Three's Company uh, the Fonz Happy Days stuff like that. And, and I've watched a lot of stand-up comedy too. And it's easy to see that a lot of that comedy is being used to cover up tragedy. And there's a different kind of laughter though. There's a different kind of laughter that comes with joy. And it's like, it, it, it's like, it's, it's like nothing that you can, you can even imagine. It's like nothing you can even imagine. It's like, and, and you know, as far as as far as bliss and and good sensations and anything like that, it's better than all kinds of the best sex you can even imagine too. See, it's a, it, there's nothing nothing in comparison to the joy. It's even better than any kind of comedy or anything like that. It does, it has no opposite. It has no opposite. 
and it's invulnerable to in, invulnerable to any kind of worldly thing. Yeah, because it's not from this world. It's uh, it's from a spiritual source. So once you've got in touch with that, then that's the bliss, and that's what you're offering to the world is is source, is, is yes. which is spirit, and that's the love, that's the joy, and it doesn't yes. come from anything e external. Yes, I mean it's super simple. You know, another way to put it is. You are basically awareness. You're what's aware of everything. And everything that arises in your perception, everything that comes into your consciousness is just showing up to get you to identify as something other than awareness. You can even say something more than awareness. You know, you can even say that you wanted to be special, so you wanted to be something more than awareness. You wanted to stand out as something. But in standing out as something, then you're, you, make it, you make yourself so that you don't share in all the love of, of source. You know, when you hold yourself out, it's like holding yourself out as separate. I'm important over here. Mm -hmm. And it's like you got your yep, back yep. turned. Like you got your back turned to your source so you don't even know your own light. You don't even know your own life. Wow, that really, wow. Because you're, wow, you've got your back to it. It's no wonder you don't feel that light. You don't see that light because you've turned, you've, you're not acknowledging. Yeah. And then you can't see the blessing in everyone and everything that's presented to you. You got your back turned. You're not seeing that everything is a gift. Well, it's like sitting in the movie theater and you're looking at the screen and it's so captivating. You're all involved in the drama and the imagery and yeah. the illusion of the movie, but the, the light is being projected from behind you. The projector, you're the projector, you're the light. The, the light uh, is the main uh, uh, substance of the movie. Uh, you can have the film, you can have the screen, but without the light going through the projector and projecting onto the screen, that's, that's the basic substance of the movie. And you are generating that light. We, but we've forgotten. Right, because we're too entranced in, in looking ahead into the movie to, to know what's going on behind in, in our own mind, in our own soul. So it you could say, in a sense, it dims the light and makes the movie darker and darker. It casts more shadows. Yeah. The more the light is dimmed, you know? And it's like, it's, like, it's, like, it's just like, it's in believing that this stuff is really real. It's like it's more, more, you could say, layers of film added to it, just covering it up and making it seem like it's such a dark movie. When, you know, in reality, in reality, there's only light. You know, even it's, it's funny how the, the illusion set out, you know, you even have the symbol of the yin yang as if there's light and dark, both. There's not light and dark. There's not, that's for the illusion only. It's only for the illusion. There's only light. There's only light. And in the illusion, we see contrast. You know, I've heard, I've even heard it said, you want the contrast because without that, you're not experiencing. Well, that's not the truth. You are experiencing still, and you love that experience, and all you want is to get back to that way of experiencing. But in a dream, in an illusory dream, you have the contrast so that you can make the choice that you need to make in order to get back to reality. Because right now, when you're not in the dream world like this, when you're not in a dream world, you're in like, let's call it the death realm, just because that's what I've been calling it for a while. Uh, let's call it the death realm. You're in this death realm where there's no body or anything. You're not having a dream of separation, but you feel separate. You sense yourself to be separate, and that's pain. It's a, it's a, it's a mental pain. So this world is a, is a reflection of that mental pain. And in this world illusion, with the, as a reflection of mental pain, we can have that mental pain healed. In the death realm, we don't have it healed. Although we feel much lighter, this is actually way denser. We feel much lighter in the, in, in, the, in the death realm 
But you know, from there, you're always coming back into projecting as a body again and again. Through this, through this dream realm, through this dream realm where we're, where we're having the perception of separation, um, we're, having, mm. we're having this experience where there's separate bodies and stuff like that, we can transcend even the death realm and will, we will actually, we will. It's just a matter of time. That's the whole purpose of it. That's the purpose of time. So that's why I say you're wasting time if you're just focused on like say, how am I gonna heal this symptom? It's a waste of time. You may or may not find success in that. It doesn't matter. It's not doing anything, you know, until that guilty self-concept is healed. Bodies are going to be perceivably dying and going to the death realm and coming back again. So that's not really that that's not really going to be helpful to try to heal a symptom. All it's doing is making more time. It's actually making more time. It's setting out time. Uh, but you know, those can be collapsed also very quickly. They'd be collapsed very, very quickly. I've gotten confirmation of lifetimes collapsing from di in different ways um, where you know these timelines just start to collapse and we are thinning the veil and getting to where it's gonna be re revealed to us, where it's finally gonna be revealed to us, the real world. And you start to sense it more and more because you can feel it, you start to feel it, what it is. You start to sense it more and more what that what that real world that's underneath this thin layer of perception where what, that's our real creation that's our real creation and it's you know where our joy is expanding see our joy all of our all of us are expanding in joy still even as we have a perception of limitation like this where all of us are expanding our joy and in our creation. And we're going to be able to, to um, inherit that, let's say, <laughs> and inherit that creation as soon as we're willing to receive it. It's like this veil gets lifted and the world of light is just revealed. And then we inherit the kingdom prepared for us from the foundation of the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you start to experience and express the kingdom of heaven more and more you know you start to see that oh i am the kingdom of heaven you know and, and and so and so you can have that as your expression all the time no matter what seems to be occurring and because then that's you're uh, you're in the kingdom of love yes i hear my your kingdom cookies already you hear my cookies i hear your cookies already okay. i don't hear my cookies yet Oh yeah, they're starting. It's getting a little dark and cloudy here. Yeah, we got that going on over here. It's gorgeous. Mm. Yeah, so chicken. that's just it. Then, mm -hmm. then, then you're the king. Of, you're not living in this world anymore of suffering. You're the king of your kingdom of love. Yes, that's that right. You're, and uh, and everyone is a king and queen. You recognize your true identity. And you see that true identity in everyone, all, all of your uh, kingdom is, yes. is of oneself. Yes, and you have the, and, and you have the, the perception, it actually becomes your perception, no matter what apparent problems seem to be occurring to you, that there's no problem. Yeah, and that's the Christ yeah. kingdom. And joy. And you just keep on feeling better and better, you keep on feeling more joyful because of what it's for. It doesn't even matter if you seem to go through sickness, strife, poverty, anything. It just, nothing, nothing affects it. Nothing. Because nothing matters. It does, you, you don't care what happens anymore. Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna even mind. And, and you know, people are afraid too. I notice, you know, even from my perspective too, there's a fear, well, if I don't, if I don't care about anything that happens, what is going to happen? You know, it's like, it doesn't matter. That's the thing. It really doesn't matter. Like I've had, um, for instance, you know, I've been posting about my, my journey with Dylan and things that are going on with, as far as parenting. I started a parenting page and, you know, I get people, I get people making comments about reporting me to social services and stuff like that. And I'll notice, I'll notice there will be like a, Thing, like uh, and immediately 
almost like I should take all my stuff down, shut down my parenting page so they can't see me and stuff like that. And then immediately it's like, it's like, no, if that occurred, if it, it, even if they needed to talk to me or if, even if they need to come over and like say, we're taking your kids, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, you but all that is just, is, is ignorance. It, it, it has no meaning or power. It's just a bunch exactly. of uh, stupidity. And I know it's not going to happen. I know it's not going to, I, I know it's not going to happen. Not even occur to me, let's say. It can't even occur to me without my authority because it's for undoing the mind. So it can even be occurring to me that someone's telling me something like that. That something, somebody, someone's saying to something like that. All that's for is for getting that. And then I get even more a sense of even greater joy. Yeah, well, then you get in that too. fear. Yeah. There's yeah a so they're, they're trying to incite fear in you. And then fear is a liar. And that's uh, false evidence appearing real, F-E-A-R. And uh, you don't, uh, you might get triggered into that momentarily, but then you have the consciousness to uh, rise above that and see the falseness of it. And then that neutralizes them. Then, then you're not bothered by those types anymore so much. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no bother with it at all. I could, it's almost like I could smell it coming. <laughs> almost like I can smell it. It's like, a, it's like this energy of it. it, it oh, bless you. It's like it's this, it, it's this any energy of I need con I need conflict mm. I need conflict. Well, you get into conflict with me if the the facts of the matter aren't even relevant. You know, I I could have like I could have like fifteen people on my post saying how much they appreciate it and how beautiful it is and the, how they would like to come and stay with me and how and and then and then someone. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then someone might come on and say how disgusting I am and terrible I am and how I need to be called so on social services or something like that. And it's like, ah, that's all. It's like, ah, it's just an energy looking for conflict. The, the facts, it's not personal at all. They can say the most heinous stuff to me. It doesn't matter. It's not personal at all. It's like, oh, they're looking for conflict. That's so sweet. Oh, well, they're not going to find it here. Delete. Mm -hmm. See? They, they'll, they'll, get it, they'll get it with someone else who also wants to look for, wants to have some conflict. But you didn't project them? Yeah, totally. Just okay. for fun. Just for fun and healing. And see, the, here's the thing, Lori. It, you're, they're, projected, they're projected because we heal together. So it's like we're of the share of a shared mind or of a shared mind. So when co someone comes to me and they're looking for conflict and they don't get conflict, not only do I get a healing, so do they. Even if they're going away, even if they're going away, even if I find myself, okay, delete. That's going to have to be somewhere else. It's not here. Everyone gets a healing because there's not a projection. There's not a projection on them like, ah, damn, how do, why do I have to deal with people like that? Yeah. Or what am I doing wrong to manifest that comment? Mm. Something like that. See, that's the ego's game. That's the play. Mm. It's like, but no, see, that's, that's what's gonna exactly what I need. But that's what's going to happen if you're a radical revolutionary lover. That's why Jesus was crucified. He didn't do any sin. He just loved. And that threatens the status quo. So you're on there talking about, you know, love uh, for, uh, you know, uh, child molesters and all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's threatening to the, to the status quo that, that buy into uh, you know, that this is a sin and a crime and it needs, to, they, they need to be uh, punished. And if you're loving them, then you're just, uh, you know, uh, approving of them. And so uh, no one understands what love is. They, they, they don't see that, that you're, you're healing the situation. Well, and, there's all this uh, focus on the behavior when behavior is occurring in your perception. 
it doesn't the behavior of what? On, it doesn't have any bearing on who they are and perception can change. I mean, it, it's mm. kind of like holding them responsible for your error. <laughs> Oops, I'm seeing you all fucked up. You're bad. <laughs> See? Right, instead of seeing, seeing the true identity, the, the, yeah. the, the Christ identity. It's like, oh, I see what you're showing me. Okay. And it feels so good. It feels so good. And it's so, it's so joyful to be moved to just not engage in the conflict with people. Mm. It's so lovely. It's like there's this, there's, and, and for, for the most part, I'm not even led to say anything about it. Yeah, well, it's a dead end road. You, you, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's just a delete. Just a yeah, delete. there's no reason to engage at all. Yeah, it's really lovely. It's like, nope, that's not happening today. And so that's just it. We can just delete all of the problems that we perceive in the world. Just go yeah, ahead and it's you know, delete. Yeah. It's symbolic. And, and just where just love love and light and peace and joy remain. Yeah. Because that's the reality. The other is illusion. It doesn't even exist. Like you say, it's made up, it's make believe. Yes, the reality is just the you know, love. And you can make That's a choice it. for reality. You can make a choice for reality anytime just by loving. So it's kind of like, thank you. What in, in whatever it is, it's like, thank you. And Anastasia said, next time you call email service, they may say that nothing is happening. They might. That would be awesome. That would be really awesome. That would be some good laughs, too. Ah, oh, that would be great. I'm just imagining that. <laughs> All right, everyone. We've had a wonderful couple of hours. I love you. Um, I'll get this thing posted to YouTube pretty soon. Oh, I love you. Thank you. It's nice to see you, Janine. I can't tell who's watching on Facebook. I just see numbers. But when you tell, send me a little note, and now I know how to read the little notes. I know how to let them scroll right underneath the Zoom thing. Then I see you, and I appreciate you. All right. Every Tuesday at 3 p.m., Wisdom Dialogues Online. Every Monday at 3 p.m., Wisdom Dialogues at Michelle's, if you're local. If you happen to be coming into the local area of, of uh, Hawaii, the big island of Hawaii, I'm uh, specifically on the east side, let me know. Get a hold of me somehow. Email. You can email at hopejohnson Hope at me.com. That's pretty easy. My website is hopejohnson.org. Another one's pretty easy. Um, and yeah, check out my website because then you got all the stuff. I did, even did a social media digest recently. Oh, and I sent a newsletter out today. Did you guys see my newsletter? You get my newsletter, Lori? I did. That's what I was. <clears throat> that was what I was on before we. <clears throat> before we that thing from Gail. I loved that. Oh, cool. <laughs> Gail's on right now. She hears you telling her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, really so Gail comes on, Gail comes on every show and she makes notes and then she starts conversations on my website about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can comment on those too. I think the whole thing about it is to start a conversation. Oh. Uh, yeah. So you can get on there and talk about it too. I'll, maybe I'll go check it out too. I haven't been on there. See if anyone on there wants to like converse with me about it. But yeah, Gail says, thank you. Thank you, Gail. Yay. So, um, yeah, Tuesdays at three, my essential oil company, I don't have the label on this one, but it's Miracle Botanicals, miraclebotanicals.com. Best darn essential oils anywhere, I'm telling you. They're really good. Um, family business sourced from all over the world, but from us here in Hawaii, we source everything. We bring it in, we make our own blends. We also have a lot, a huge variety of just pure essential oil. People get a, a, hold of the, a hold of our stuff and they're like, what? I mean, really? So check it out, miraclebotanicals.com. Subscribe to my YouTube if you like to see these videos. And also there's three um, short clips going out from every one of these videos. There's three short clips and, um, and you can get notifications of those. 
And sometimes I even just go live spontaneously because something just has to be shared right away. It's not even scheduled. And then that'll also go to YouTube live and usually on one of my pages on Facebook. Subscribe to my newsletter. You'll get all of my social media stuff in one, in one thing. One, I call it a digest. So what I, what I do, like um, early this morning, wee hours of the morning, I went through all my social media pages for the month of August, and I copied everything, and I put them into little categories. And I put them on one page and made it really easy. So then you can see all of them for August, and it's just it's fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. so check it out. HopeJohnson.org. Mahalo. Techie. What's that? Little techie you. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of techie, and I'm getting and I'm getting more techie. I'm getting um one-on-one -on -one tutoring for making this yoga app that I'm into. Who knows? It might happen sooner or later because I got this dude that's super good at it, and he likes to not only walk me through it but show me how to do it. And I just have this really cool idea for a yoga app, and I'm stoked to use it and share it. Ooh, Yay. that would be really good. Yeah, I'm going to put my own routines on there, too, so you can follow my routine. Um, or, but I'm making it in modules. So what you can do is, is go, you know what, instead of this, on this at this part, I'd rather do this. So you could just move your own module into it and, do it and, and arrange it however you like, however length of time. Yeah, it just sounds so fun. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, until next time, I love you. Aloha. I love you. Bye -bye. And a hui ho. Yay.